Okay, so the aspect of probability that I would want to review uh, is that of uh, concentration. So, these are called as concentration inequalities. So, uh, what are these and why are these needed? So, um, in general there is some random experiment that gets conducted. Uh, these could be collecting data, these could be algorithmically picking some data points or whatever it is, right. So, there is a random variable that you know captures the outcome of this experiment. The experiment can have multiple outcomes and, and all the outcomes are the sample space of this random variable. Um, and we have some information about this random variable, but not the entire information. Right. So, that is typically the case because uh, you know you might uh, you might have information about the average value that this random variable takes. You might have some information about the variance of this random variable. Right. So, the first moment, second moment and some amount of information about this random variable, but you would not maybe perhaps have the entire distribution of this random variable. For example, you know um, a case where you do have entire distribution of the random variable is let us say I, I I, I throw a dice, a dice is a six phase dice, you know, uh, let us call this random variable x um, and, and the sample space of this random variable um, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right. So, and uh, you know, the event space, I mean, one, one, one typically also associates an event space with a random variable, uh, which is just the, what I am going to call is the power set of uh, 1 to 6, which is any subset of 1 to 6, including the empty set. Well, which means that these are the sets for which we can, we are going to associate probabilities. Um, and what is the probability space? Well, well, it is just first in this, because this is a discrete random variable, it is going to tell me what is the chance of seeing a 1 in this experiment of rolling a die. Right, so this might be 1 by 6, 1 by 6, dot 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 1 by 6, right. So it is all 1 by 6, yeah. So this is a random variable where what I am stating is the sample space which means all the values that this random variable can take and I am also giving you information about what is the chance that each of this, you know, um, each of this outcome uh, has, right. So if the chance of 1, seeing a 1 is 1 sixth, the chance of seeing a 2 is 1 sixth and so on and so forth, all the chance of seeing any number in this die is 1 by 6. It is a, it's a uniform, right, so unbiased die. Now, here I have specified the entire probability. But now, in, in lot of real life cases, right, so you might have much less information. For example, you might have only information about, you know, the expected value of this random variable. What is the expected value of this random variable? Well, how do you calculate it? You you will multiply the outcomes value with the corresponding probability with which it occurs and then sum it up over all possible outcomes. Right? That is your expected value. So, I might have some information about expected value. I will not, let us say, have the entire distribution with me, right. So, here I am telling you the entire distribution of this random variable, right. So, I know the probability mass function of this random variable, this is a discrete variable and I know everything about it. But for instance, if I do not know everything about it, um, how can I still make meaningful statements about certain events that might happen, right. Um, that is the goal of concentration inequalities. It is trying to say that, you know, um, what can it say about the values that this random variable takes if I only have partial information, right. So, like if I only have information about its mean or variance and things like that. So, I will give you an example. Uh, some of you might already have seen many concentration inequalities. Um, you can think of your favorite or the simplest concentration inequality which is most likely what I will put down now, right. So, the, the, the one of the basic concentration inequality that many of you might have seen is what is called as the Markov inequality. Uh, which is, which says, which states the following, it states uh, for any non-negative random variable, uh, by non-negative I mean the random variable cannot take negative values, it can take values only 0 or above, um, 0 or any positive value, 
um, and any a greater than 0, some value a which is greater than 0, um, now the inequality states the following. So, the probability that x is greater than a, let us say greater than or equal to a is at most expected value of x divided by a. Now, what is this saying? Right. So, uh, let us let us look at this uh, uh, statement a second and understand what it means. It means that you know I am um, asking what is the chance if I do an experiment right. So, with some random variable about which I do not know much um, except its mean, but still I want to ask a question what is the chance that this experiment will lead to a value greater than or equal to some number a. Now, I do not, I, I will not be able to calculate the exact probability simply because I do not have the distribution with me, right. So, the distribution may be because um, in some cases I simply do not have the distribution with me or in some cases the random variable may be so complicated that it is very hard to exactly compute the distribution itself. Whatever it is, I do not have the distribution with me, but which means that I will not be able to calculate exactly the chance that x is greater than or equal to a. For example, here is a random variable, right. So, here is a random variable. For this random variable, if this is the random variable x, the, the one that where I roll the dice, if I ask what is the probability that, you know, x is greater than or equal to 3, then I know what is that probability exactly because I know the probability values. I, I, I can in fact calculate this. What is the chance that x is greater than or equal to 3? Well, it means that x is either 3, 4, 5 or 6, which means that, you know, it is the chance that, it is the chance that, you know, x takes the value in 3, 4, 5, 6, right, one of these values. Well, what is the, because these are mutually exclusive events, the, if 3 occurs, 4 cannot occur and, and so on. So, this is just you know 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 which is 4 by 6 which is 2 thirds. I know this you know I, I know this for a fact right. Now, uh, but let us say I did not have this information right. So, if I did not have this information, uh, but if I only knew let us say if, if I only know let us say the mean of that um, of this random variable, uh, then you know I will not be able to exactly calculate a number like 2 by 3 because I do not know the probabilities. But what Markov's inequality is saying is, well, you can still calculate, may not be exactly, but you can still calculate some upper bound on this probability, right. So, that is what Markov's inequality is kind of saying, right. So, um, just to illustrate this, right, so let us let us take the same example, uh, maybe instead of 3, maybe if I say 5, right. So Right. So, what is 5? Uh, 5 would be it is either 5 or 6 in which case this value would be 2 by 6 which is 1 third. Right. Um, now, let us say I am I am not giving you this information, I am only giving you e of x. What is the expected value of x in this case for this random variable? Well, I know what the expected value is, it is 1, 1 into 1 by 6 plus 2 into 1 by 6 plus etcetera plus 6 divided by 6, right. So, that is uh, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, uh, 21 divided by 6, uh, which would be uh, 3.5, right. So, 3.5 is the is the expected value. I, I tell you that, hey, this is a random variable whose expected value is 3.5 and I ask what is the chance that, you know, let us say probability that x is greater than or equal to 5, yeah. Uh, we know, I mean, the probability is actually one third, but what is Marco telling us? The Marco is telling us that I cannot tell you that it is exactly one third because you did not give me all the information. You only give me information about the mean. So, with the mean, with the help of the mean, let me give you some value, right? So, and what is it going to tell me? Well, it is going to tell me that it is expected value divided by the value that I am asking for, right? So, in this case, it is 5, right? So, it is it's basically saying this is 3.5 divided by 5 which is 0.7. But remember the actual value in this case was one third which is 0.33, right. So, what this is saying is that this value is actually 0.33, but then Markov is telling me that, well, 
you only gave me partial information so I can only give you some rough estimate of this value it is where I'm saying that this probability is at most 0.7 right so it cannot be more than 0.7 well one trivial way to say what is the probability of x is greater than or equal to 5 uh, I can say it is at most 1 right so because any probability has to be at most 1 that's a trivial upper bound but what Markov is giving me is a slightly more nuanced upper bound it is telling me that it's at most 0.7 now, of course, points one might say that, well, that seems like a loose bound. It is in some sense loose, right? So, because the actual answer is 0.33, but I am saying it is 0.7. Well, but the actual answer is 0.33 for this particular random variable where the, the, the values the random variable took were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 with equal probabilities. But now, Markov is, has to not just work for this random variable, it has to work for any random variable whose mean is 3.5, right? So there might be a different dice, right? So different probabilities for the faces of the same dice whose mean might also add up to 3.5, right? So, or it might be not even a dice, it might be a completely different experiment, right? So the X can take several other values, perhaps with different probabilities, but still, you know, the, the mean might still be 3.5, right? Now, no matter what the random variable is, as long as the mean of that random variable is 3.5, the chance that the random variable takes a value greater than 5 or greater than or equal to 5 has to be less than 0.7, less than or equal to 0.7, right? So, for this particular random variable, it, it is true, it's true here also, 0.33 is less than or equal to 0.7. So, it, it, it has to hold for any x whose mean is 3.5, it holds for this x also. But if you change the x to have some other, take some other values with the mean still retained to be 3.5, they should still work, right? So, in, in that sense, what this is saying is that even if you don't know, even if you did not give me the individual probabilities, as long as you are telling me the mean, I'm still able to say or make a statement about what is the chance that this random variable will take, let's say, a large value. In this case, the largest value 5 that I'm talking about, right? So, um, and, and that is bounded by E of x divided by E. So, now, why is, why is this something like this useful? Where, where might something like this be useful? So, as we go along in this course, we will see a lot of examples where you may have to make statements about, you know, whether certain quantities is, can take a large value or a small value in a probabilistic sense. Um, but, but just to give you a feel for where this might be useful, you know, um, you can think of random variable x as, you know, distance um, of a data point to cluster center in k-means. Uh, what does that mean? That means that, you know, um, if I am, let's say, I, so I, I'm assuming all of us are aware of the k-means algorithm, where, you know, you compute um, a clustering of data points, you cluster data points into k different clusters. Um, and critically, the algorithm itself, if you remember the algorithm, it depends on the distance computation of a data point to its corresponding, uh, you know, cluster center. Now, um, let's say you had uh, a certain number of data points and, 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 and after you do the k-means algorithm, let's say you compute the average distance of each data point to its own cluster. And that, let's say that average uh, happens to be... Uh, 5, right? So, 5, the, the, let's say the Euclidean distance is 5, right? So, in, in your data set. Now, uh, now if I, if my, if let's say I have some randomized algorithm um, where I am going to pick a random point and I have to do something about the, and, and my algorithm is going to use this random point and its distance of this point that I have picked to its corresponding cluster center. Let's say that's what my algorithm is going to do. Right, so it's not going to use all the points somehow to reduce computation or to increase efficiency or for whatever reason. For now, let's not worry about that. Uh, the algorithm has to, you know, close its eyes and then um, pick a point at random. Right, so and now I I want to be sure that you know um, the point that I pick has you know distance to the center cluster center not too big. Right, so it's not too away from the center of the cluster in which it is assigned to, 
right so then i might be interested in questions like right so if i randomly if i randomly picked point uh, for let's say for a randomly picked point uh, what is the probability or chance that distance to cluster center is greater than or equal to 20 i might ask this question right so now um, if i if i only have computed the average distance from my data set of each point to its own cluster center and i found it to be 5 then i know i can use marco inequality right so i don't have to compute each you know i don't have to again to answer this question um, in a rough way i don't have to go ahead and look at each of the distances again and see how many of these distances are greater than 20 and then divide by the total number of points right so instead of doing that markov is telling me a uh, quick and dirty way to say roughly some answer right so it's saying probability of x let's say x is the distance uh, x is the distance of a x is the random variable um, which computes the distance of a picked point to its cluster center we know that this is at most 5 divided by 20 because this is the expected value of x and this is my a that i am asking here right so and that is uh, 0.25 right so it says you know uh, there can't be more than 25 percentage of the points in my training set which are at a distance of 20 away from the cluster center now that might be a good thing or a bad thing depending on the algorithm that you are developing right so but then this saying that you know at max there can be only 25 percent of the points 0.25 is the probability right so which means at max there are only 25 percent of the points uh, which which are too far away right so when i say too far away the way i am thinking of too far away in this example is using this value 20 right so 20 is my golden gold gold standard for being too far away let's say for my algorithm that i'm developing and now i'm saying you know if the expected value is 5 marco will tell me that not more than 25 percent of your points are outlier points or bad points so to say right so that gives me a rough idea right so that's that's the idea of uh, using you know an inequality like marco when you only have information about the about the uh, mean of the distribution